Okay, so I came across this video on the internet concerning how wicked God is. And first of all, I would like us to play the video to see how um, the answers go. And then from that, I would also come with what I think concerning this question. So let's watch. If he knew they were going to eat of it, why did uh, he create it? That's a really good question. Um, <laughs> if he knew uh, they would eat. And this particular question is one question you would mostly come across, especially if you are part of an evangelism program. Most atheists, or should I say unbelievers, tend to ask the same question. People just don't understand why a good and loving God would a good and loving God knowing how evil and disastrous this world is going to be after people eat after Adam and Eve taste of the tree of good and evil would still go on to place that tree in the garden of Eden why why did he create it that is a really good question. Well, Sophie, um, I'll give you the short answer, uh, and then we'll do a long one. Uh, the short, and let's all, come on, let's all look. Everybody have Genesis 2.17 there? Let's get there. Because actually, this is, uh, um, in the visitor line this morning, someone came through the line, and, and I was meeting them. And I said, where do you normally go to church? And they said, we moved here. And, and they said, the type of church they're from. And, uh, and, and this is a very big doctrinal issue, but I'll read it. 2.17 says, uh, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat it, you shall surely die. And uh, so why would God, uh, if he knew they would eat it, why did he create it? Uh, Sophie, you're gone. Where did you go? There you are, right there. Uh, there are three answers to your question. And uh, here they are. Basically, uh, the first is the infralapsarian view. Uh, the second is the supra lapsarian view. And the third is the, Doug, sub? Where are you? Where, I heard you up, where's Doug? Oh, right there, sub lapsarianism. Sub lapsarianism. And this is lapsarianism there too. Basically, uh, the Bible doesn't say. No, it doesn't. That's why there are three views. The Bible does not say. What it says is um, that God knows all things. Uh, Deuteronomy 29, 29 says the secret things belong to God. The scriptures also say that God's decrees cannot be broken. So these three uh, views of, of the fall is... Did God, as they were falling, as they were going through the fall, was he navigating and, and, and guiding the process? Or uh, above the, I mean like before uh, there was even a fall, and after the fall? It's kind of like, did God uh, know it was going to happen before it even happened and already had the plan, you know, in eternity past, did he after it happened or did he while it was happening? Now that's not really how it goes, but that's how I like to summarize them. But basically this, this is the answer. And, and this came with, uh, I don't know if I ever fully, oh, where did she go? The newlywed. Um, oh, there you are, Mia. Um, uh, the, the idea of evil and why did God allow evil. It's very connected to that. And basically it's this. I will give the simple. 
God was showing. See, already, already Satan had fallen. You all know that. Isaiah 14 um, and Ezekiel 28 says that already Satan had fallen into sin. And the same reason that God allowed Eve to partake of the tree is connected with, with Mina's question about why did God even allow evil? And, and I gave that answer briefly, and I will give it briefly again, because just the fact that we have lapsarianism and volumes written on something that the Bible never addresses. You understand that? It doesn't address all things. It only tells us the things that God wants us to know. But I will just take what we know. Satan fell. So number one, Satan fell. Then Satan comes down and begins tempting. There we go. Well, it doesn't like, I don't know. There we go. Then the tempting of Eve started. So chronologically, Satan fell first. Why, see, the real answer to, to Sophie's question is, why did God even allow Satan to fall? Why does God even allow evil? Why? Because of God's omniscience, his wisdom, actually, theologically, with, omniscience is a nice word, but actually the biblical word is wisdom, that God doesn't discover anything, he never learns anything, he has no additional knowledge. So does God know who's going to be saved? He knew that before anything was created because before there was time in eternity, eternity past, even though there isn't no past, there isn't past, present, and future in eternity, but he has always known everything. I think that's the first thing you have to come to. Either you have a, if you know anything in theological circles, the, the whole Greg Boyd, God doesn't know the future view, which is very weak and dangerous and unbiblical, or you have to come to the point that God knew all this was going to happen. And he, before it ever happened, determined the outcome. But why? The concept of God is a broad topic that we might not necessarily have a full understanding to. And so the little knowledge concerning God that we read from the Bible is just everything we might know about God before then we move into the Holy Spirit. But now you have a God who gives man free will. And and now to fit this explanation within the context of this video, and especially where he has got into in this video, God is omniscient. And so he knew the outcome of 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 where man would have gotten to got into by now if man had not partaken of the fruit of of the tree of good and evil and at the same time he knew the consequences of man if man partakes of the tree of good and evil and so it's not as if man was destined to fail right and that is the explanation I'm getting from this particular video right now. It wasn't as if man was destined to fail, that God created man to come and fail. And so let's not have this idea that we were born to function a certain way and for that reason we wouldn't change. And I find this particular reasoning within the LGBT community, I mean, anytime I dialogue with them, they tend to to along this path that this is how they were born and so they wouldn't they wouldn't change because that is whom God wants them to be it's not it's not true you have the ability to change everybody gets to change one way or the other and so let's not let's not um, press this particular reasoning on God but why and here's why I think and uh, I mean who am I to say I mean uh, Calvin wrote his institutes when he was like 20-some years old or so. I mean, uh, Luther, I mean, the reformers have true Augustine, probably one of the biggest minds ever to be on this planet since Christ's mind and Paul's mind. They could not figure this out. And so, as St. Augustine said, Augustine, he said that, that these, 
these truths are like this. They're like an ocean. And the ocean has this little shallow part where the water's warm and kids sit and splash on the ground. They're splashing. Little children can sit there and enjoy it. But you keep going out in it and you'll drown like an elephant can drown. So I'll give the short of it. God is perfect and self-existent. And so because God is perfect and self-existent, only God is self-existent and is perfectly good. All those attributes you know. His goodness, uh, his, his sufficiency, that, that he doesn't need anything to keep himself going, his power, and all that. All of us are out here somewhere. And here's Satan right there. There's Lucifer. And God kept him perfect. Nothing is perfect on its own. Nothing. Nothing is self-existently good and able to perpetually continue in perfection. I mean, there's lots of big words for that. Satan, Satan was out here perfectly doing what God said, but that's because God was keeping him. What does it say in Jude, the last two verses of Jude? Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. The, the, the preservation power, the power God has to keep us is, is all that keeps us alive. That's what Colossians 1 says, that through Christ all things consist. He's holding everything together. And so what did he do? God just uh, briefly just said, I'm going to demonstrate what happens when I don't hold on. And he just for a moment went like that, and it says, evil was found in Satan. That's what he said. I mean, um, look at Ezekiel 14. I mean, I, I can, I mean uh, Isaiah 14. I can talk all night, but we have to keep with the scriptures because uh, I want you to see how I think. But Isaiah 14, and uh, it says, Isaiah 14, starting in verse 12, How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? I'm in Isaiah 14, 12. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, now this is what's so interesting. Actually, it appears biblically if you merge, uh, you know, here's the throne of God right here. It's on this high mountain, and it's a throne. I don't, I'm not an artist. My father was an artist, but there's a throne, and, you know, God is, you know. And this is just my personal take. Without law, there wouldn't be any obedience, right? People could get to do whatever that they like, but God didn't create man to do whatever he likes. God knows what is best for man, and so um, God assists us in doing what is right. And one of the things that God lives by is law. And so God shares with us his law, his rules. And we also get to partake of the rules that God has given to us so that we get to know we are in right standings with God. The tree in the Garden of Eden wasn't a way God um, sought after to destroy man. Some people think the tree was in the garden so that man will sin. That wasn't the in intentions of God. The tree in the Garden of Eden was, was there to test man of his obedience with God. And so the more man, man got to know he is obeying God as a result of how he rejected the tree consistently or continually. And so if the tree wasn't there, man wouldn't know he's obeying God. Okay. It's the same thing with um, God casting Lucifer out of heaven. And most people say that if God knew Lucifer would come onto this earth and torment man, then why didn't he kill or destroy Lucifer? Which is a subject I'll tackle some other time. But in short, if God is, in the, is into the business of immediate killing, then I don't think we would all be here. We wouldn't be here because you watching me have committed so many sins that you know you should have died but just by the message of God but doing away with the law in the garden and with obedience 
I think there is also one thing. The, the tree in the Garden of Eden also helped man to measure his love for God. Man wasn't created to function like a robot. And so we get to exercise what I said from the beginning, free will. And our free will is what made us love God genuinely. Without free will, then that means we would love God out of compulsion. And that wouldn't have been right. That wouldn't have been genuine love. And so that's another thing. But now a solution has been created through Jesus Christ. And I personally feel that is what people should mostly be focused on. But you can't really determine what people should think and not think. And so it's like that. I mean, no matter how good or perfect the world will be, certainly there are people who would still complain about it. And so it's normal. The best you can do is pray for people to come to the knowledge of uh, the wisdom of God. And I think after evangelism, anytime I go on evangelism, when I come back, I simply pray for people because I think I have found the light, but it's just difficult for people to agree that Jesus is the way and the only way to get them to agree is to first of all pray for them else it's just not going to work and questions like this will keep popping up no matter how best you answer them and so yeah until my next video peace out